Hi everybody, uh, this is Alistair from, uh, here from Gifts for Geeks doing our first Magic Origins booster box unboxing. Uh, I'm just going to get in and see what we get inside. <laughs> Hopefully without any more disturbances. Uh, let me get in. So, box open that. That's all fine. We'll take the boosters out. And we'll sit them down here. Rest of the other way. Right. So, let's go straight in. So, first booster. I'm really just going to go through the rares and the next thing we get straight off as a days and day. It's a nice mythic rare. That's pretty good. Nothing else really interesting in the pack. So let's go to the next booster. Days and day currently, along with a couple of other mythics, one of the highest value cards inside of the minute. It's a thought to spy network, kind of on the edge of playability maybe. Um, but yeah, it's alright. It's not worth much at the minute though, but there's a lot of possible one cards that's got a possibility of going up once we know what's good in stands. So, that's the next booster. And Animus Awakening. Again. Probably not constructed playable. Um, it's worth a little bit more than the Doctor that spun up at the minute, just because EDH and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, there you go. So, next booster. Let's go down there. Infinite obliteration. It's the new extirpate effect kind of thing. Um, again, on the edge of standard pl uh, of constructed playable, well, maybe. I think it gets better in older formats where um, this effect's more useful. I guess you, there are more things that you want to just target and get out of your opponent's deck. So, like Gristle Brown or that kind of thing. Um, that's the main one I can think of right now is the balance has just come out and the Goro's Vengeance deck is still alive and kicking him on. Um, but in standard, probably not a player. It's not going to be worth a lot. Okay, next booster. Guy's Revenge. It's a nice reprint. Uh, Mythic downgrade to a rare there. Um, but it's a pretty cool casual card. Uh, and it's a pain to deal with. That's all I can say about that. So, let's go again. Battle Forge. Always, lands are always solid. These guys got reprinted in M15. Uh, again, put back in standard. They just brought them back to the core set for Magic Origins. Um, so yeah, that's always good. Worth like, probably aside from this, the most expensive thing we've opened so far. So, next booster. Oops, sorry that, move the camera a bit. Uh, Demonic Pact. This one's really interesting. So it's one of the, it's not like, worth a lot of them in it, but it's one that's on the edge of playability. They print an enchantment that says you lose the game on it, which is always nice. Um, but people talk about things like you can uh, play it with the new Opalescence, I think it's Starfinum Nix, and you can use it to kill itself and then bring it back and you know, people just pretty cool, I'll be honest. Um, go to the next booster. But, worth a bit, but not loads. So, another Animus Awakening. Not great. Um, I did that one already. Going down here. Mana Gorge Hydra and a Jace Emblem. Kinda cool. Uh, so the Hydra, Hydra is another interesting one. Um, where the minute it's not a lot, it's a, got still kind of like Creon Dryer style effect to where you get a Cosmos one count and players cast spells. Upsides, it's got Trample, which is awesome. Um, so you don't have to worry about like just getting chump blocked for days. And then also, uh, it's whenever a player casts a spell rather than uh, you or a certain color or uh, anything like that. So, um, it's a couple of pounds at the minute, but. I can see it going up, maybe? There's a chance that it'll just go down. Um, Flame Shadow Conjuring is a really just a casual card. Uh, not worth a great deal, not, not worth much at all. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Let's see how that one. Might come back to days and doing it in a bit. Tragic Arrogance, the new, the new Cataclysm. Uh, not quite, but for each player, you get to choose. Um, the permanents uh, from their permanents, a creature and a chairman and a pines walker and an artifact, and then they sacrifice all the other ones. That's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, Chaffra, 
No, not because Red's a playable. Uh, just to clarify. So, on the next one, ooh, there's a shiny foil mountain. And, uh, Soul Blade Gen. Um, again, not a great value card. There's a thought to take in. Um, it has a, it's like ridiculously powerful and limited. Uh, but, yeah, just no inner constructor playable, I feel like. Um, so, next booster. Uh, Foil Resoul, and a Cage of Colors, which is, it's the cheapest of the dual ones, it's been reprinted so many times, um, between the event deck, and also, uh, yeah, mostly the event deck, <laughs> and, uh, it was in a, one of the, sorry, it was in two event decks, it was in, uh, a sand event deck, and also in the modern one, um, but, yeah, lands are never bad, that's decent, so, let's move on to the next pack. Uh, Foil Talent on the Tower Path, this card's pretty cool. Um, it's a really nice one for Commander. When you get to cast your opponent's spells and everything. And there's also a Grave Blade Marauder, which, again, not very high value. Um, but, yeah, this is pretty nice. You worth a little bit, anyway. Uh, next booster. Second Caves of Quills? Okay. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. Again. Lands are good. It's not worth a great deal, as I said, though. It's been reprinted so many times. Read that. Exquisite Firecraft. This card's pretty cool. I like this one a lot. Um, I think it could be constructed playable. Um, so it's uh, three mana to a four damage shock creature player, and then Spell Mastery, um, which is if there's two or more in the sorcery yards in your graveyard, it can't be countered by spells or abilities, which is super powerful, um, and it's a very good burn spell. So I imagine that one will be seeing a decent amount of play. And it's worth a good few thousand a minute. So next booster, and we have the new Elf Lords, Dwayne, Gilly Fleet, Dane, uh, Elves in Standard, could be a thing, will it, maybe, who knows, yeah, I'm, I'm on the end of yeah, but I don't know how many of these you want to play, um, I think the build I'm messing around with at the minute plays like one on the main and one on the board, the aggro decks, kind of getting you some life against things like goblins, uh, but yeah, uh, it's worth a few pounds, next booster. And here we have a Mizzy the Melodon, which is also a pretty promo, so it's not going to be a great deal, but it's really interesting. Could well be modern playable. Um, when it's, it's got, it's a three, three mana one four with Flash, which, you know, there's a modern playable already, people know that. Um, but instead of being a Splinter Spin target, you don't need any more of those. This one, when it enters the battlefield, uh, you can change the target of spell or ability to Mizzy the So just imagine for a second stealing your opponent's Splinter Twin. And being able to have a split into one of these guys, just make more of them and change sides of everything. It's pretty cool. Nice mirror breaker. Um, maybe. We'll see. So, next booster. Uh, Shiver Reef. A lot of lands, this one. That's pretty good. Um, it's one of the more expensive of the duels we got. Uh, let's see some modern play. Let's go again. So, we have. It's a foil. So, the foil turns rock, which is kind of cool. And there's also a Cthopathed Soul Hoarder. It's one of the legendary creatures in the set. Um, but not very valuable. Again, intro pack rare. Probably honestly constructed to play. It's a 6 mana, 6-6 six, six in black. But it has flying, but doesn't do a lot else until it comes down. This comes down. And here we have a pretty cool mythic in Alhamarat Archive. Not currently all that expensive, but if you gain life, you gain double that amount of life. And if you draw a card, except the first one you draw in your draw step, you draw two cards instead. Which is pretty cool. That's a nice booster. And here we've got... Uh, an Embermore Helion, which is a Jaffer, and a Chamber of the Pack, which is probably worth significantly... Probably worth twice as much as the Helion, I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, really good in the new Elf deck, if it's the thing. Question mark. Or not a question mark, does it happen? Pro I think it's going to try to play. Well, anyway, um, Evan will have however, nowhere near. Um, it's a chaffer already. It's pretty cool in like red, red casual decks. You might play it in EDH and that kind of thing. It's good and limited. And so I'm out of 4 5 trample that makes all your red spells better. Uh, but let's move on quickly. So we have a foil, Chief of the Foundry, who is the new Artifact Lord there. He gives all the Artifact creatures plus one plus one. That's pretty cool. He's a 2 3. And the rare our pack was an Orbs of Warding, which is a bit like a new, um... Oof. I can't remember the name of the card. It's the, uh, the 
but uh, <laughs> uh, it's from in the Stranding of Sea Hexproof. But uh, five mana, um, you have Hexproof, but it also has an initial ability uh, where if a creature does damage to you, it prevents one of that damage, which is pretty nice. Your tokens do nothing, so I'm sorry. Uh, so next booster, Let's move on. Uh, you have a hanger back walker. That's a really interesting. So I, re I quite like this card a lot. I don't know if it's going to be constructed playable, but it might well be. Um, <clears throat> it's got a nice ability. So it's XX. Uh, it comes to play with X some sort of counters. But when it dies, you get that many Thopters, uh, 1 1 flying Thopters, uh, into play. And it can also put counters on itself, which is quite nice. So maybe, 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 maybe. Next. It, it's not just for the minute, but it's one of the cards I could definitely see going up in price um, if it's his play. Which is kind of how it works for core sets, really. At the minute, um, there's a lot of cards that aren't uh, particularly valuable that might well go up once they're proved standard playable after or after the Pro Tour. And here we have the Helm of the Gods, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's an equipment that gives a creature plus one plus one for each enchantment you control. So it has to be enchanted to it, which is quite nice. Once mana to play, once equip. Pretty cool. I'd like to see that play somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, let's go to the next booster. So we have... Uh, a foil non falant John Avon Forest, which I'm a big fan of. Um, but then our rare is a second Ember Moor Head again? Uh, uh, not great. Gonna, gonna move on quickly. Okay, alright. All right. We got a foil John Avon Forest. Like, we can't be that unhappy. Um, I do love non falant falant lands. Uh, so this one's an Emethic, the Great Aurora. It's green. Uh, it requires lots of shuffling and then you put some lands into play. Um, yeah. Not constructed playable, quite a good fun card for EDH. Not worth a lot. New booster. So, put the camera again. This one has a Harbinger of the Tides. This card's pretty cool. Probably almost, I should say, de definitely constructed playable. Um, blue, blue for a 2 2. Uh, you can cast it with Flash for paying 2 more mana. And when it enters the battlefield, you can bounce a tapped creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Very good. I'm, I'm a big fan. You can't bounce Goblin Pile Driver, however. It does have protection from blue, which is a... It's not a downside, but, you know, it's just a thing. The Spoiler of Souls. It's a pretty interesting card, um, but at the minute, not worth a lot. Could see player maybe like Mono Black Devotion, that kind of thing. Uh, you can exile cards to bring it back from your graveyard, which is a pretty neat ability, but it can't block. But it is a 3-1, which allows you to be pretty aggressive. Um, ah. And my pile of commons has gone everywhere. Uh, so, new booster. Um, land or wastes. Again, lots of lands. That's another pretty good one. Uh, give the elf deck. And also, uh, like, Abzan and Standard. So, let's skip again. I'm accumulating a pile of rubbish there at the top. But, let's see what we get. And um, we have an evolutionary leap. This card's pretty cool. It is no survival of the fittest, though. Uh, two man enchantment. Green sacrifice a creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card on t into your hand and the rest on the bottom on a ran in a random order. Um, has the ability to be really powerful, uh, especially with things like token effects. Um, it's ridiculous and limited with all the thoughts just floating around, let me tell you. Uh, but also worth like a little bit at the minute. Decent amount. Good few pounds. Three or four. Uh, but nothing super valuable here, to be honest. The days I'm doing is worth a lot, but that's about it. Nothing else out of uh, really over five pounds. Uh, so we have a full Guardian Automaton, which, yep, anyway. Uh, and we have an Outlawing Colossus, which is also not really worth talking about. Uh, it's a Chaff Rare, yeah. Seems to be 40p. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going with. You can get them on our website, giftsthegeeks.org.uk. Uh, so next booster. <laughs> And we have a Scab Flam Berserker, um, which is, it's a kind of cool card, but I don't think it's going to be particularly playable. It's a 3 mana 2 with haste, which, uh, yeah, a bit too weak. But um, it's got Renown, which is a new ability where if it deals combat damage, it uh, gets a plus one plus one counter and becomes renowned. While it's renowned, um, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it deals 2 damage to that player. Uh, it's only opponents, which is quite nice. Kind of like Eidolon of uh, Eidolon of the Great Ravel uh, slash Pyrocytic Pillar Effect. 
new booster. And this one has a Relic Seeker, the new Stoneforge, not quite the new Stoneforge Mystic. Could it be constructed playable? Eh? Um, worth a little bit in the minute, and there's a foil Topan Fruit Blade. Just an awesome limited card, if nothing else. Um, let's go again. The new booster. Coming to the end here, I'll do a wrap up once we've got there. We've got one booster left open, I believe. Yeah. So this one has a languish. This is much better. Okay, uh, so this is a really good new sweeper. It's worth about seven or eight pounds at the minute, maybe even nine. Um, but minus four, minus four to all creatures, which conveniently does not hit Sea Drino and Tassiga. People are all like, ah, Absent's going to be the best deck of the format. Will it be? Eh. I'm sure. But the card's very powerful. And next booster. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, we've got Jace. That's nice. That's nice we're going to end this out. Um, I quite like this card. I think it's quite good. We have to see what it does. How it does. Um, so, very quickly. It's a 2 mana, 0, 2. Uh, you tap it, you can tap it, and then discard. So, like, a perfectly a type effect. Uh, and then if there's 5 or more cards in your library, he flips into Jace, Telepath, Unbound. Uh, now, his plus 1 is not great. He gives the target creature minus 2 mana, so to my next turn. But his minus three is is effectively a sorcery speed snapcaster mage. So you can cast it into the sorcery card from your graveyard um, by paying its mana cost. Uh, and then the emblem, minus nine. If you like Mill, you'll love this. Whenever you cast a spell, target opponent puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. That's pretty cool. I like the card a lot. People are like, yeah, it might not be playable. Uh, you get a little checklist card like I did for Innistrad with them. Um, but he's possibly probably the second most valuable card we've opened. So very quickly, uh, days undoing. So mythics, days undoing. Jace. Uh, there was a copy of the Great Aurora around here somewhere. Yep, there we go. I think that might have been it. So I'll flip through this pile. Uh. Of which we got two good ones and two not so great ones. I'm hoping to see some play. I'm really hoping. Uh, looking through the rest here. I think that's all the mythics. Oh, we also got an Alpha Match Archive. Missed that. And no me, I've probably missed another one as well. No, 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 okay. And this might also go up, but it's worth um, about the same amount as a Demonic Pact to them, I think. So that's worth about, uh, at least worth about 12 pounds each. Four to five, about two pounds. Um, yeah. So it's the mythics. I'll just let these appear for a second. Now, as I you might have mentioned, as I said, we got quite a few lands. So we have a Lanawar Waste, a Shivan Reef, a Battlefield Forge, and two copies of Caves of Coilios. There was one more, but maybe I'm wrong. No, oh yeah, so you've got five lands. Again, these ones are pretty cheap, but these this one's in the middle, and these two are good ones. But lands are always good to have. People are always after them. These over here. Uh, so, let's see. 24, 34, 36 pounds. 2, 4, 7, uh, 11, 15. It's 51 pounds. And then we have, uh, effectively, the rest of this. Um, of which this is about four pounds at the minute. Um, I believe this is around three. I might be wrong. This is currently nine pounds. Um, and this is about four, I believe. So we made our money back on the box. Um, we're doing boxes for £64.99, which I think is a pretty good price uh, on our website, guessforgeeks.org.uk. I'll plug it again. Um, and then we also got just a your last overview. Uh, uh, this is my favourite, personally, the, the giant of the forest. But yeah, the box is alright. Um, lots of lands, a few decent value cards, uh, a languish, harbinger. Yeah, thanks for watching, uh, and have a good day.